<sighs> Let's draw Overwatch heroes as dinosaurs, shall we? Let's get to it already! First things first, of course, gotta pick some characters to do. I'm thinking I'll do two, maybe three if I get to it. Admittedly, this week has been a mess. I wrote and started shooting an episode that my camera stopped working during it, then I tried to just record the audio, then my sound stopped working, and then I got sick, and then the other episode I was working on I wasn't really liking, it wasn't turning out so great, it had a Gyarados in it that looked kinda cool, but it was, it was a bit of a mess. So instead, we're gonna do something fun and light and just draw Overwatch heroes as dinosaurs. And I think one of the ones that I have got to do, of course, is Tracer, because she's she's really the face of Overwatch, right? I mean, she's on the cover of the game, she's a character everyone knows, and why am I having such a hard time finding her in this book? There we go. Okay. So, oh, this is a heavy book. So, Tracer. Tracer is fast and lean and agile, and she's got to be a Velociraptor, right? Like. There's nothing else Tracer could be but a Velociraptor, so we're gonna draw Tracer as a raptor. Now, another one that I definitely really want to do... Uh, there he is. Reinhardt. Now, Reinhardt is a nice, big, bulking brute of a man. He's got a big shield, and he's got, if you look, this it might be hard to see here, maybe I'll put another image up, but he has got three horns on his helmet. Oh, he's actually got five horns, but from the front it kind of looks like he only has three. So obviously, gotta make him a Triceratops. Now, if we get to a third one, hmm. Ah, my personal favorite character to play as in Overwatch, Farah. She's a flyer, pterodactyl, seems like a pretty simple choice. <sighs> Let's get to it, shall we? That probably shook the camera. First things first, of course, roughing out some potential poses or thumbnail sketches. I like this one, but wanted to try something a little bit more dynamic, so I went with this one of her running at the camera. I kind of liked it, but didn't love it. So then I tried one more that was more like how I do a character in my side scroll animations, but that wasn't really cool enough. Tried one more running at the camera, but eventually just decided on that first pose that I'd tried, because. It wasn't super dynamic, but I thought it worked well for showing off the design of this dinosaur that I was doing. The next thing I had to decide on was whether this dinosaur was going to be wearing clothes and the, the tech that Tracer's wearing, or if it was going to be worked into the skin somehow. At first I started off with the dinosaur actually having armor and clothing, but I eventually scrapped that idea and just kind of built all of the colors into the skin of the dinosaur, and I'm pretty happy with how that ended up turning out. As you can see, I messed around with the arms a little bit, trying to find a natural pose for them, and eventually I just decided to give the dino a pose, kind of like what Tracer's doing in my reference image. And uh, I thought it ended up pretty cool. I was liking how this rough was turning out. I put just a little platform on there. I think in my next drawings I want to add actual backgrounds, but we'll see what happens. Obviously backgrounds add a bit more time to the process. Then I got to the inking stage, messed around with a couple different brushes, but then just ended up going with my usual. I went with super thick lines, because I've been in a really cartoony mood since doing that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse art last week. I think for the next one I'll also want to try going with a bit thinner line art, uh, make it a little bit less cartoony, but overall I was pretty happy with how the inking was going for this one. One thing that turned out a little bit weird was putting a little indent in the dino's chest where Tracer's time travel reactor thing is. I think that was a little bit of a weird choice. I probably could have come up with a more creative way to put some kind of blue light on the chest of the dino, but uh, oh, I'll do better next time. I just flatted in a bunch of colors using gradient maps as I usually would, put a little bit of extra detailing besides the flats before I got into the shading and lighting. And I ended up doing a bunch of different layers of shading and lighting, and I really messed around with how bright or dark they were. It turned out a little bit of a challenge that I'd made Tracer's base brown color really dark, because I tend to start with things a little bit lighter, then add lots of shadowing, then add a little bit of lighting. For this, I felt like I probably should have added more lighting in the end, or at least started with a brighter base color. So I messed around with those levels a bit, added some rim lighting to make the character pop a bit more, and then I just added a few more extra subtle little details, 
And uh, finally, just added a little color background to make her pop out a little bit more, make it a little bit more interesting. I think in the next one, I do want to do an actual background. Oh, maybe I shouldn't promise that. Let's see what happens. With this next one, I didn't go with the kind of bland, boring first post that I came up with. I ended up trying some more dynamic ones and ended up going with one where he's kind of hunkered down as if he's just been pushed backwards and he's ready to leap into a fight. Like he's about to start into an attack. And I did end up drawing in a background for it. And uh, I don't know if it really improved it over the last one, but at least it was something different. I also did end up giving him armor as opposed to the last one, because Reinhardt's really all about his armor. He's like a big armored soldier, so it wouldn't really have worked if I just tried to work his colors onto a Triceratops. He would have been a little bit too bland. I also wanted to work in his shield, which I ended up putting on his uh, the back of his head frill thing. Um, I don't know what that was called. Also, you can see he's not really a Triceratops the way I did him here. He's got one horn on his nose, then he's just got the the crown or whatever you want to call it. When I got to the inking stage, I did try to make the lines a little bit thinner than in my last piece, but they still ended up pretty thick. I think in the next drawing, I'll go even thinner with the lines, maybe just give the outside lines some real big thickness to them. Admittedly, I've also been having a bit harder time inking in this video because I'm trying to not zoom in and out so much and move the screen around, because I noticed in the Spider-Man video from last week that it gets a little bit crazy when the video is so sped up and I'm moving in and out of the image and pushing it all around the screen because at I speed things up to about 9,000% the speed, so then any zooming in and out looks just so crazy at that speed that you can sometimes barely tell what's going on. So usually I zoom in a bit more, get more in depth with some of the little details, but it's hard to do that when you're not, you know, zooming in and out. When I got to the flatting stage, I tried making the background a totally different color from him. I tried to make his grays a little bit blue-ish, and then make the background really red and orange just to have some major contrast between him and the background. Later on, I end up changing that, but uh, I don't know, it might have worked that way, but there was something about it that just wasn't working for me. I end up, when I get to the lighting and shading stage, You'll see that I end up, like with the last one, really messing around a lot with the levels of the different lights. I think with the next one, I'm gonna try to do fewer levels of lighting and just be really detailed with the one or two layers that I do end up using. I'm also thinking now that it probably would have been cool to do Reinhardt as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I had thought about that in the first place, but because of the horn on his head, I thought, eh, you know, let's go Triceratops, which funny that he's not really a Triceratops now, but uh, I don't know, I think I want to do another one of these videos if people end up liking it, and I will want to do a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I don't know what Overwatch character would really lend themselves to becoming that. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments, or if there's any other kind of turn this into that video that you want to see me do, let me know. This was obviously very inspired by Lavender Town, whose videos I just recently started watching, and they're all great. Go check out your, her channel if you haven't seen her stuff before. It's really good. And, uh... But yeah, this is me getting toward the end of the image. I tried adding in a texture in the background, but I didn't really end up using it. So the image ended up like this. To be perfectly honest, I'm not totally satisfied with either of these. I mean, I don't mind them. I like aspects of both of them, but I think I can do better. So let's do the third one, far as a pterodactyl, and I'm gonna make it the best one yet. With this drawing, I kind of broke one of my own rules and didn't do multiple thumbnail sketches because I just really liked the first pose that I'd come up with, so I just stuck with that. And then I went to town on the design, and it was honestly really easy with Farah. Her costume just lent itself really nicely into transforming into a sort of pterodactyl. I mean, her helmet already has that beak on it, inspired by the Egyptian god Ra, so this whole piece just felt really natural. And when I got to the inking, I did do things much, much thinner. And I tried to make it a little bit more comic booky and a little bit less just cartoony. I added some cross hatching in there, and I think all the things I did with the inking really helped this piece be the one that stands out from the batch. I think she actually ended up looking a bit like if you took Samus and Ridley from the Metroid games and mixed them together. Which, 
Kind of makes sense, because Far already kind of looks like Samus. Also, you'll notice that the one place that I did do the thickest lining was just an extra layer of ink around the outside of the character to make her stand out a little bit more from the background, which just ends up being a sky with a bit of cloud in it. And you'll notice for the flats, which I've done in every image, I've just been color picking the colors for the flats off of the actual reference images that I brought in. And for the wings, you can see I had an extra big layer of yellow, which Farah doesn't really have on her. Her mask is kind of the most yellow part of her. But I thought making her wings either blue or gray would have been either too much blue, and the gray would have been a bit too bland, and the yellow really makes her stand out, especially when I get that blue sky in there. So I thought that was a nice way to go with her wings. It went by kind of quickly, but the first layer of shading that I did wasn't like I started all the other images with. I used a very, very light brush, and then did a little bit of blocking out different parts of the wings and just doing some light brush strokes, and I think that really helped this image be a bit more comic booky and a bit less cartoony. I mean, it's still cartoony, just not as much so. But this is the image we ended up with. Well, I'm definitely glad that I did the third one because Farah is easily my favorite of the three. I think I like Farah, then the Reinhardt, then Tracer. I mean, I'm happy with parts of all of them, but I kind of wish I'd done this rendering that I did on Farah that's a little bit more comic booky on the rest of them, and then I think I would have been happier with all of them. Also, I think Tracer probably could have done with a background, but, you know, there's good things about each one of these pieces. Also, in next week's video, I'm going to be making some announcements about what's happening with Pop Cross Animations in 2019. Things are just going to be getting bigger and better. And, of course, I got to announce the winner of the print last week. Thank you to everyone who entered, but the winner of the poster was Ferntastic Animations. So I'll be in contact with you to send you a nice big print of the Spider-Man poster from last week. Let me know what other kind of drawing videos and animating videos you want me to do. Happy to do more of these or any other kind of projects you guys think I should tackle. Let me know in the comments. But for now, I've been Christian Pearson, and I will see you next week.